इस ब्लूमबर्ग यू टीवी Hello and welcome to everybody's business. This is that one show where we really discuss the big question: Where does your money go in the budget? Can you actually ensure that you know where that money goes? Can you get the hisab, as we would say, of every penny? We have a power pack panel with me today. Joining me, delighted to welcome him once again. They are calling him the Sage of India Inc. Gurcharan Das is here talking about the subtle art of making your money accountable. Also, an old friend of the show. Delighted to welcome Yamini Iyer. Delighted to see us in a sari once again. Uh, Yamini Iyer, of course, one of the brightest young minds in the public policy space, runs Accountability Initiative. Also, our partner on everybody's business this season. With them tonight, we are going to discuss the big question: If it's going to be a 21st century budget. can it be an accountable budget can we make it a budget that means something to all of us first let's take the example of one of the biggest flagship schemes of the government it's called narega it's all about providing employment to millions of poor families in the villages let's take a look even if we, as we begin the show at some figures first the allocation of narega in 2009 2010 that's fy 2 no 2009 2010 that's 39100 crore rupees you can see the graphic on your screen right now funds released in 2008 2009 that's the year before 96% unspent funds 25% spent on wages 69% that's the big story of narega also the other graphic on your screen right now remember a two fold increase in allocations in rural development in the last 5 years lots of things clearly going right but of course also lots of things going wrong never before has narega been challenged in questions about why its efficacy isn't more in spite of all the money that goes in why doesn't it happen why are no more questions asked all that on this show tonight let's begin by asking you can we get accountability and why don't we get accountability even in a big scheme where the government is clearly committed like narega yeah i mean this is the sad story isn't it that uh, i think <clears throat> the leftists are wrong when they say that the middle class is callous does not want any money spent on the poor but i think that we everybody would be delighted if the money went to the beneficiaries and assets were created by narega i mean this would be wonderful and <clears throat> what we have is constantly uh, i mean they, so far what i i was under the belief uh, for the last over the last year and a half that actually narega has improved over its predecessors that this is for the first time you have a scheme where because of different accountability measures in it uh you have better performance so more money is reaching the beneficiaries that's right that's um but you're right i mean <clears throat> when people who were the founders and creators of narega that's right <laughs> john drays and others are questioning it you really lose heart that's right why do you lose heart yamini ayer are you beginning to lose heart <laughs> no actually i think narega is very interesting precisely because we are in a position today to ask these questions which we can't of many other schemes because there's such little information available in the public domain on how money is getting spent where it's going what is getting spent on um and narega has that and also there's so much focus by people like you and me by ngos civil society organizations the founders of nrej who are running around the country actually looking and monitoring at how the program is being implemented so there's a lot of hope but like everything in india um we you get some things right and then a lot of things are going wrong and the big challenge with nrega today is the implementation story so we have a really good design there are transparency mechanisms built in at every level in the program if you look at the act it's it's actually quite fantastic um it's the, the problem is in implementation so some states are doing really well take the example of andhra pradesh that has decided on its own to do social audits on every single nrega work site it's unprecedented anywhere in the country the question we need to be asking is why haven't other states followed suit why 
why is Rajasthan, where this all started, still not able to create a system where they are able to have regular social audits for the implementation of NREGA? And the fact that we're having shows like this is a good sign, at least we're asking these questions. We're asking the right questions. Gurcharan Das, let's take the debate a little forward, a little broad base it a bit, and ask the bigger question, is the malaise of Narega good intention, bad implementation, really the story of the Indian fiscal accountability of government's uh, problem. Yeah. It's the same problem in budget after budget. Yeah. It's the same problem everywhere. We have the money. Yeah. We do not have the willpower to implement. Yeah. And uh, that is the sad story of our, uh, of, of our country. I mean, uh, the, the, you know, the, the fact is today that almost every program of the government, you know, you just suspect it, that you just don't feel the, the confidence, you don't feel good about government spending money, and yet you want it, you want these things. I mean, the, the thing we were just discussing about teachers, you know, when teachers are absent in the way they are, and uh, the salaries of teachers now, Salaries of a government school, primary school teacher in a village, a permanent teacher, is between 21,000 and 40,000 rupees. That's right. I mean, even Dune School has a very hard time <laughs> because of this. And all private schools are having a very hard time. Now, and then after that, the teacher doesn't show up. And then when they show up, they're not teaching. So, I mean, this is nothing diminishes us, I believe, more as a nation than this failure. It's also then a moral failure. It is a I mean, you know, sense. that it is a teacher, after all, okay, so you sack one teacher and maybe the others come. Right. But how do you assure that they teach with their dharma? It's my calling That's that right. I have to inspire young minds. How do I inspire young minds? How do I teach with dharma? What is the dharma of accountability? That's the big question we'll ask in just a bit, back in just a moment.